So the first thing we're going to do inside of Adobe Animate is we need to go ahead and name our layer. Our first layer is going to be our ground. We're going to create a simple line here. All I'm going to do is grab the line tool up here, but first I have to go ahead and create the timeline. So let's go ahead and insert a frame here at the one second mark. Then I'm going to grab my line and holding shift, I'm going to click and drag out a nice horizontal line. Uh, mine's white here. I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to black. I want a black stroke so that I can see it. And then I'll go ahead and kick up the weight of my stroke. I want to get it to two. So uh, the slider bar can be a little finicky. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight here and type in 2.00. And that's a nice stroke of two pixels in weight. I'm going to make a new layer here, and we're going to rename this one Zuli because I'm actually going to be creating our little ball that will be animated. Okay, so uh, once we have that here, I'm going to go ahead and change the color of our ball. I'm going to make sure that I am set to hold shift. I want to make him one size. Keep him nice and small. I'm going to need to convert him into a symbol here. I'm just going to get him in the right position. Looks like we've got him set now. I'm going to go ahead and control click. Go down here to convert to symbol. And because we are going to be making a still image out of him, he's going to be a graphic. So I'm going to name him GR underscore Zuli. That's going to be his symbol name. Now we've got a symbol that can be animated. So let's go ahead and get ready to animate him. I'm going to want to go down here into my timeline and I'm going to control click and I'm going to create a motion tween because I'm going to have him moving right and that's going to change the color of his timeline bar to this light blue that you see here. Now I'm going to go over to frame number 10 control click and I'm going to insert a keyframe at his position uh, you are using a newer version of Adobe Animate, so you can actually click on the small keyframe tool inside of your timeline. I'm going to hold shift because I want to keep him in one position, and I'm going to go ahead and inch him down to about this point where I'm going to switch over to our free transform tool, and we are going to begin his stretch that will become... Uh, the first portion of his journey. Okay, so as he picks up speed down here, we want to stretch out Zuli a little bit, and we're using that keyframe to say that I want to make that stretch happen here at this point. Right after that, I'm going to make uh, another, I'm going to insert another keyframe just after this second one here. And for this keyframe, we're going to go ahead and squash him. We've already stretched him so now we're gonna squash him and remember if you're gonna bring in the top and bottom we gotta bring out the sides as well alright we're gonna go ahead and squash that out and here just after that keyframe we're gonna make another keyframe uh, because we wanna actually morph our Zuli to stretch back up as he shoots away from the floor that, that rebound. So we're going to create a positional keyframe here and we're going to adjust Zuli. We're going to bring in his sides, stretch out the top and bottom. We're going to get a nice stretch and then we'll just go ahead and adjust them. I'm using the arrows on my keyboard to just kind of tweak him upwards a little bit. And then we're going to go over here to the uh, last frame in the timeline. I'm going to insert one more keyframe at the position here and I'm going to take him back to where he was when we got this whole thing started. Um, we're using this motion line to help guide us back to where we left off. Now uh, I'm going to try to get him back to the same size that he was and that might be a little difficult if, uh, if I weren't able to go back to his first frame here and verify that he is definitely bigger <clears throat> excuse me he is definitely bigger 
at frame one than he is at our last frame here. So I'm just going to kind of bounce between the two and make some adjustments using the freeform shaping tool here. I want to get him so that uh, his first frame and his last frame are both at the same position as well as the same size. So I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth between these two until I can get them similar. And looks like we are almost there. I'm going to make a little adjustment here. I'm going to hold shift while I make my adjustments so that the width and the height will remain consistent. I don't want to accidentally make him too skinny or make him too flat. I want to make sure that he stays a perfect circle. So once I get him to where uh, I'm pretty content with his shape, I'm going to scrub through and just verify we've got our nice stretch and our squash at the bottom there. And we have a very decent squash and stretch. Now, obviously, there can be some tweaking to be done here. We can start working on a couple of other principles, such as our ease in and our ease out, so that it doesn't feel so mechanical in our bounce. But uh, we'll save that for another tutorial. This is a very basic and rudimentary squash and stretch study utilizing a rubber ball. And it looks like we've got it where we want it to exist. So we'll go ahead and call this a done video. Thank you for watching. Remember to export your final video and attach it to your portfolio before turning it in to the classroom online. Thanks for watching and happy drawing.